Now there are other techniques for working with chart comparisons, which I do not think are as dependable as the two that I've mentioned, but they can, one of them at least certainly can be used as part of the picture. A lot of people have gotten gung-ho about composite charts, since Rob Hand popularized the idea. A composite chart is a chart of midpoints. You take the midpoint of the two people's sun, and that becomes the sun in the new chart. The midpoint between our two moons becomes the moon in the new chart. The midpoint between our mercuries becomes mercury, and so on. And there are two different ways to handle the house cusps. You can take the midpoint between all their house cusps. That's also one possibility. Or you can just take the midpoint between their midheavens and then use that to get the rest of the houses out of the table of houses using the latitude of where they're living. So there are several, actually, you could do variations on those themes, several possibilities for houses, to get houses for this final chart. I believe in testing <coughs> anything in astrology. And the real test is, of course, a blind analysis, where you try to analyze a thing without knowing what the answer is. So I set up, when I first got introduced to composites, I set up a sheet of six little charts. And those of you who are here, you know, I'm very fond of those sheets that have six small charts on them to work with. Six little composite charts. Three of them were relatively positive relationships, and three of them were relatively negative relationships. There was one successful marriage, a very happy and successful marriage, and exceptionally happy. And there was one marriage that ended in divorce. There was uh, one relatively successful business relationship and another highly competitive, two people competing with each other. There was one parent-child relationship with a, quite a bit of mutual support in the relationship, and there was an attempted assassination. Someone who tried to kill someone, succeeded in paralyzing him. So, theoretically, according to the theory that's put out on composites, you should be able to say this is a marriage composite, this is a business composite, this is a parent-child composite. The theory actually was offered that you could do that much, that fine-tuning. But even if you can't do that, at least according to the theory, you should be able to say which are the harmonious relationships and which are the stress-conflict relationships. So I gave that sheet of six charts to half a dozen groups around the country when I was lecturing, doing workshops. At least half a dozen groups worked with them. Every group, without exception, picked the assassination attempt as the happy marriage. <laughs> <laughs> they picked the relatively cons constructive parent-child relationship as the assassination attempt. <laughs> I concluded that composites alone are not a dependable picture. <laughs> and a lot of people who don't use midpoints, even in navel charts, still swear by the composite chart. And for an obvious reason, because it's, it's easy. Yeah. They take one chart and they think they got the answer. And they don't have to do any work. Please do not depend on the composites alone. If you want to use them as a supplementary tool, they are midpoints, and midpoints are a valid part of astrology. But to use just midpoints and ignore where the planets are <laughs> is not good astrology. As an example of what can happen with composites, remember they are midpoints. Suppose you have two people who have a Jupiter, let's say a Venus. Two Venuses are conjunct in their charts, one Venus on the other Venus. Now suppose Jupiter in one chart is, <coughs> is square, that Venus, and in the other chart it's quincunx. The composite is going to give a Jupiter-Venus trine. Or suppose one Jupiter is sextile, that Venus, and the other is trine, that Venus, the composite is going to give a square. But they're going to say the square is positive. Sure. They'll twist it to fit if they know the circumstances. No, but the book even says the square between Venus and Jupiter is yeah, and I say a square is a challenge. And I say a square is a challenge, whether it's Jupiter or Venus or anything else. A square is a challenge, which doesn't mean it has to be negative, but you have to work with it. 
Then one of my more amusing reports from someone who was in one of my workshops, she attended a Rob Hand <coughs> workshop in Chicago soon after he brought the book out. And uh, Rob is very Sagittarius, and he tends to jump into something with great enthusiasm, when something new, with a basis of a very few cases. And uh, then later, with more testing, it, it may turn out not to be quite that final, that much a final answer. But at this point, he just brought the book out. He was doing workshops around the country, demonstrating how you could read a composite and tell people about that they're married. So in this workshop, one composite he said, oh, this is a disaster. These people should never have married. I don't know how they ever could have gotten together. It's impossible. It never lasts. And that happened to be the woman who told me the story. And she and her husband had been married 30 years, and they had had problems at the beginning, and they had worked them out, and they had a good marriage. And another composite, he said, oh, this one was made in heaven. This is like the ideal marriage. You know, this is like you forever, beautiful. And that couple was already divorced. After that experience, he stopped doing that kind of workshop. <laughs> but of course, you can't retract the book when it's out of print. I don't know. But he has Jupiter rising and several things in Sagittarius. <laughs> but he's a very bright person. He just tends to get this enthusiastic thing, you know, carried away, and he writes and rushes it into print. <laughs> anyway. Composites are part of the picture if you use them as an auxiliary tool after you've done longitude aspects and house positions. They will give you additional information if you want to go to that trouble, if you want to really understand more about the person. But I do advise not depending on a composite alone to give you a total picture, a full picture, or even a really totally accurate picture. You know, I, I did a composite on me and five men that I've been involved with in my life. Mm -hmm. I did get some interesting mm -hmm. information, and the only two men that I lived with, we both had our composite signs in the same house, so it was very accurate that way. Uh huh. The two living together were like, I think, 12 inches down on the floor. Good. That will give you, it will give you some additional information if you just don't use it alone. It is a useful tool, provided it's with other tools to back it up. The other type, uh, other tool that's used, I am not at all sure of that it's of any value. My in initial instinct was is that's got to be game playing, <laughs> and I have not tested enough to know. My just in my gut reaction is now, come on. <laughs> this is the Davidson time space chart. It's called. Ronald Davidson made up this one. You take the midpoint in time and the midpoint in space into a chart. So if one person was born in August of 1942 and the other was born in 